the emerging trends and challenges uh, will impact real estate over the next five years in several different ways, much of which is still to be played out. So you've got the dichotomy between the uh, employees who got used to working remotely from their cottage in Devon or wherever it may be, and the employer who wants them to return to the office in order to impose the culture of the organisation. And then you've got this war for talent as well, because uh, many of the best people who work for an organisation may still prefer to work remotely, for example, and if the, uh, if the company is not prepared to bend and be flexible, then they may choose to go and work for an employer who is prepared to be flexible. So you've got this pull and push. There has to be a real reason and purpose for the occupier to get back to the office, for their staff to return. The other aspect is going to be flexibility, because the pandemic, of course, has demonstrated to many occupiers that they need to be agile. So they want to be able to take space which will allow them to grow, but equally to shrink as well. So we're going to see more occupiers taking space, which on multiple leases with different lease terms, a mixture of core space and flex space, to take, taking space with flex occupiers, but something which allows them the agility to, to flex, to grow, to shrink within, a, within the space. Those are the sort of themes that we're going to see. Colliers are partnering with their clients to address these challenges by having to build a team, a big team around a transaction. It's no longer just the tenant rep broker negotiating the commercial terms and a lease. It's now the tenant rep broker working very closely with the client, the real estate team. Very high on the agenda now is HR, so the HR team are heavily involved. The Colliers team needs to bring with them a full suite of skills they need to bring the commercial skills, the technical skills, strategic, sustainability. They need to look at the, at the people and how the people of the, in, in the organisation are going to respond. So it's now a much more complex transaction bringing together a complete suite of skills. Another major change which we're going to see in relates to sustainability. For years, the real estate industry has talked about LEED and BRIAM, which we understand. But outside the real estate industry, the CEO, the shareholders, the customers of the organization, the clients of the organization, they don't necessarily understand it because it's a real estate term. What they do understand, though, is net carbon zero. And therefore, what the real estate industry needs to do is to move the sustainability agenda a further step forward and actually provide buildings that really give something back to the organisation, to the company, something that the, C the CEO can actually shout about and that's fully understandable. And we're already seeing this in the City of London, where several buildings are already being marketed. And they, they, the way they're marketed now, the number one marketing strap line is this building is net carbon zero. And that's the direction that we're going to go in.